welcome back. I'm excited you uh, come back to join me. And very, very happy to, one, get into the Word of God, but two, uh, do what I can to, to learn and maybe uh, teach you. And uh, we can all get much closer to our Lord and Savior and further away from the adversary. Without further ado, uh, bow your heads, most gracious Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And thank you. And I just ask for your wisdom, Lord, and you take charge. Let me just sit, step back and you just put the words in my mouth and let it reach the hearts of those out there that hear it. In your most precious name, the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Today, uh, let's go a little bit of overview of what we did last week. And I pray that uh, those out there that truly heard my first video uh, truly give their heart to the Lord. Um, guys, again, you know God is real. You know, He loves you so much. Um, and all we ask is, hey, to have that relationship with you. And I pray many of you did do it. Um, this week, we're going to go into uh, the adversary, Satan. Um, so you can't win a war or even uh, withstand the bombardment of the enemy unless you know the enemy. Uh, not just know him, but maybe know some of the weapons he's going to use against you. Um, Let's turn your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 14. Uh, excuse me, Isaiah chapter 14. We'll get to Ezekiel here in a second. Isaiah chapter 14, we're going to look at verses 12 to 14. We're going to find out who Satan really is and what, what he sure intends to do to each and every one of us. Um, here we go. Isaiah 14, 12 to 14. You ready? How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer. Right there. Son of morning. He has many names, of course. This is one of them, the son of the morning. Lucifer, how you are cut down to the ground. How, how God threw him out. You who weaken the nations and still weakens the nations. For you have said in your heart, here we go, and you go hear a lot of eyes because that's what it's all focused on him. Kind of like what you hear in the world today. There's a lot of eyes. I will send into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. He wants to sit above you. He wants your worship. On the furthest sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the Most High. Yet you shall be brought down to Shoal, the grave, to the lowest depths of the pit. Do you notice all those eyes? I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will ascend into heaven. I will be like the Most High. You see, I believe, I know Satan was a created being, of course, it's going to tell her in a second, but he was a created being. I believe he thought God was also a created being, but he wanted to get himself above God. He saw what God had. We'll go see what he had. Because he was a top angel. He, you know, he had it made. Uh, the same way you and I are going to have it in heaven. But he had it made and he wanted to be God. He wanted to be worshipped. Um, turn your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel 28. And we're going to go to verse 13 all the way to 17. Matter of fact, let's go up to uh, yeah, 13. You were in Eden. The Garden of God. See? Right in the Garden of Eden. That's where Satan went. Remember where he attempted to uh, eat. But you were in, in Eden, the Garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. You're going to go into it here. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the ox, the jasper, the sapphire, the turquoise, and emerald with gold. He had it all. He had it all. The workmanship of your timbles and pipes was prepared for you on the day, here we go, you were created. You were the anointed cherub, angel, who covers. He was in charge of the throne. I mean, he, he was it. I established you. God said, I, I established you. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created. He was perfect. I mean, there was no imperfection in him. God doesn't create imperfection. Again, like we talked about last week, 
He don't create homosexuals. He don't create liars. He don't create thieves. That's from our choice. You were created perfect in your ways from the day you were created till, here we go, iniquity was found in you. Sin. Iniquity. Until he found it. Until God seen in his heart. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within. I mean, this is the same way. We can't get what we want. We, can't get, we get angry and upset. And you sin. There we go. Sin. Separation between God. Death. Separation between God. Sin. He sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing. Profane. Extreme hatred. Extreme can have nothing to do with you. Out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they may gaze at you. Even the kings. He said, I cast you down to the kings. You're not a king. I cast you down. He said, because of what? His beauty got the best of him. His splendor got the best of him. He wanted more. There's the enemy. There's Satan. Now that he was cast out, and he knows the last chapter. Guys, he knows the Bible better than you and I will ever know it. He knows it. The Bible's Jesus, the Word. I mean, he knows it. Kind of like some of you might be out there. My son, for instance, loves to get a book and turn to the last chapter and read it because he wants to know what's going on. <laughs> ahead of time. Um, Satan knows. See, he hates you with a passion. Why? You're created in God's image. You have that choice. He hasn't taken you yet. God hasn't taken you yet. You still have that choice of where to go. You can go where Satan was at and have it. See, when you're made in God's image, and Satan hates that image, can you imagine something that you can't stand? Would you have a picture of that in your office or your bedroom? Can you imagine looking at that all the time? See, we were created in God's image, and Satan hates you. He knows the last chapter. Now, his whole goal, he knows where he's going to go. He's going to take as many, many of you with him as he can. The only way to hurt God is to take away what he loves. I mean, even the Bible says, you know, in Jesus, you know, when he sees, he has tears for those that are going to hell that choose. He has tears because of the love he has for you. So Satan knows all we're going to do. I know where I'm going to go. And the Bible says he's the God of this world. So I'm going to do the most destruction I can. If you know the war is over, you're going to try to do as much destruction to the enemy as you can before you, you're you taken down, right? That's what Satan does. That's what Satan does. Let's look at some of his uh, weapons he has that he, uh, he has today. The most important thing that Satan has, we all know he has a power of persuasion. He has that little whisper in your ear and like we learned last week um, how your spirit battles against the flesh and we serve God and, and love God with from our spirit we're you know a body spirit and soul we serve him with our spirit um, Satan knows that if I can get a, the focus away from God get their heart away from God um, it's so much easier uh, for them to end up where I'm going to go. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, the weapon, the number one weapon he's got against us is he tries to focus our heart away from God. Uh, Proverbs 4.23 says to guard your heart. Guard your heart because everything flows out of it. Everything flows out of your heart. They say um, if you want to know the value of a man, uh, follow his money. I go one step even further than that. You want to know the value of a man or a woman. But if you want to know the value, follow their heart. Follow their heart. My heart might be into, and I love camping, but my heart might be into camping, might be into nature, might be into um, cars, might be into money, might be into fame, might be into pride. Uh, mine, of course, my heart will be different than yours. Um, Satan knows each and every one of you intimately, intimately. He's a very patient, very patient um, entity, very patient that he knows exactly what buttons to push and how to focus 
that your heart away from God and the things that you like. I mean, come on, how many times have I've heard many times, um, well, God wants us to be happy. You know, we should be able to have a nice car, nice house, nice. You see, now you're starting to focus your heart um, away from God. Luke 10, 27 says to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with everything. Love it all. Love it all. When I first read that, when I first became a Christian, I thought, boy, that's kind of selfish. Um, you know, that God wants, you know, all my love, you know, for Him. But then the closer I got to Him, the more I understood what it meant. Think about it. If my whole heart is so focused on God, my spirit, my my so everything is so focused on God. Uh, there ain't no room for Satan. There ain't no, Satan cannot detract my heart away from God. He can't. There's no room. I once heard a pastor say, if you're so filled with the Spirit, so filled with God, way up to here, there's no room for Satan to get in. You're, if your heart is so focused on Him and God's love, everything else follows. I mean, everything else. Um, you're, Satan... Treats us like a puppet. He wants to manipulate, you know, where your heart goes. Um, he wants to, one, for instance, entice us to sin and then turns our own heart against us. Look what you did. You're supposed to be a Christian. I can't believe that you're not a Christian. I can't believe you just did what you did. Uh, see, you're no better than anybody else. See, he, got, he has your heart so focused on him. That you're useless to God, you're useless to your family, you're useless to, you know, you're so focused on Him that you become your own God. I remember what He said, you know, the first and greatest commandment, you know, you shall have no other gods before me. So your whole heart is focused on what you want. Uh, you kind of make yourself into a God. Um, the second weapon He has, your focus. So now your heart is away, uh, but how about your focus? Matthew 6.23 says, 6.33, let's look at it, Matthew 6.33. Um, when you hear me give the Bible verse, open up your Bibles. Um, read, a, read after it, see what, what the Bible says. Um, get into it in depth, even after the video is over with. And um, find other verses that say the same thing. 6.33, I got part of it on one page and part of it on the other page. But seek first <laughs> the kingdom of God and His Righteousness. Remember we learned last week, righteousness is what God says is right. So you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then here we go, and all these things shall be added to you. He goes on to talk about not worrying. He's going to take care of you. He said, if you seek me first, imagine you love God with all your heart. Now you love your wife better. You have a stronger relationship with your wife because you love God, and you're going to obey God, and you know God teaches you how to love your spouse. If you... Seek God first. No matter what Satan has at you or throws at you, it's okay. If you seek God first, right, you might have a better relationship with your boss. You you could get along with your neighbor, even though he's not the nicest guy in the world. Um, but you seek God first. Everything else is gonna gonna go forward right in line, right in line. I seek God first. My whole remember, my whole heart is focused on Him. I'm seeking Him first. Now my whole mind is opened up for God to speak through His Word, through circumstances, through other people. Um, my mind is opened, and I'm gonna I'm gonna start hearing from God. A lot of people say, "Why well, don't hear from God?" If you're not hearing from God, then maybe we gotta redirect our heart, especially our focus on Him. Think about it. How many times have you spoke to a spouse or to your ch children or? grandchild or even a boss and he's got his mind and he's so focused on something else he's reading the newspaper reading a book yeah 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 what, uh, what would yeah what was that again and, and it kind of upset you because you're like wait a minute didn't you even you know hear what i said no because his mind or her mind wasn't focused on uh what you were saying when we have our focus so far on god uh, satan hates that because he's trying to redirect your attention what is the main focus Today, if you had to sit back and say, okay, what is my main focus or what is the main focus, say, of the United States today? What's the main focus? I can give you probably three different areas. One, social media. Two, uh, TV. 
uh, and three, first, and maybe we ought to change this into the first one, but uh, ourself. Um, social media. Social media is like any other uh, item we choose to use. It can be used for good or for bad, but social media, if you look at it, we're so focused anymore on social media, whether it's computer, Facebook, um, <laughs> forgive me for not knowing a lot of those um, other areas, Twitter and, and all the other areas, that, but we're so focused on that and what other people were doing, what other people were wearing, and what other people said, and don't get me wrong, I'm glad you're, you're on, focused on this today, but we're so focused on social media that we're no good to, our, to God, first and foremost, to our families, to our loved ones. We spent so much time on social media. Um, TV is another one. Um, we're so focused on spending two or three hours, four hours, five hours a day. I think they say the national average now is four and a half to six hours a day what each of us spend on watching TV. Four and a half to six hours a day. Now, if you sit down and you budgeted your time during the day, how much of that do you think would be focused on God? Now, a lot of us say, well, you know, I wake up and I say a prayer of Thanksgiving. That's fantastic. I mean, I'm serious. Uh, before your feet hit, even hit the ground, if you're praising God and you're, and you're lifting Him up, that is awesome because you're putting your focus on Him. You're starting your day out with your focus on Him. But most of the time, people will say, well, you know, I say a prayer when I wake up, you know, before I eat, before I go to bed, and, you know, I do ask Him for things. Um, think about it. What if your wife or your husband, they spoke to you for a minute or two in the morning, um, Maybe a minute or two before they, you know, they ate, and then again before they went to bed. What kind of relationship would you have with with him or her? You see, a lot of times we treat God like a genie. Now, I, I'm, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm going to go to church on Sunday, put a few dollars in the offering plate. I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you, but I'm kind of busy. When I was in Germany, I first got off that airplane in Germany. I knew when I first landed on the. Uh, at the airport, and when I got off, and I looked around, before we, where we were taxiing in, I looked around, and I knew right then and there, it hit me hard that I'm no longer in America. You know, it's like a whole new planet. It's like God had picked me up and put me into a different planet. And, of course, you know, I trained there and lived there and ate there and uh, for uh, three years, but I knew I didn't belong there. And that's what the Bible says, that we're supposed to be in the world, not of the world. You see what I'm saying? Um, so when we're so focused on the social media and what everybody else is doing, and then we start to Satan now get our focus. Remember, our focus on social media. Now let's turn the heart around. Wait a minute. So and so just said something that you don't agree with and believe in, and, and oh man, somebody just made you mad. Um, you see what I'm saying? Now we start getting into gossip. We start getting into you know uh, tearing people down, and we start. He's got your whole focused on what is not righteous and what is not holy. Um, and that's where we spend. I, I, I know people that spend eight, ten hours. Um, I know a couple of people that spend almost 24 hours a day in front of the TV. Um, and it's got to make God sad. It's got to break, break in his heart. Um, what, what if that was your children? What if you want, all you want to do is spend time with them? And, and God's not going to budge in there and bulge in there and say, hey, you know, people ask, well, why doesn't God do this? Why doesn't God do that? Think about the great love that he does by not doing that. He going to make you into a puppet. But he wants a relationship with you that you choose. That you choose to have with him. I mean, what greater person to have a relationship with? But he's not going to bulge in a budget in there and say, wait a minute. Okay, now it's my turn. You just had two hours with your wife. And now it's my turn now. He's not going to do that. Um. The love he has is just so great that it won't allow him to do that. Um, so sit down if you get a chance and look at how much time you spend each day. What, Where your heart really lies. Where's your focus really at? Um, and ask yourself, you know, do I truly love God above everything? And um, where's my heart at? You know, um, most of y'all will probably say your family. That's fantastic. But remember, like we learned last week, not that you hate your family, but if you had to compare the love from God to your family, if you compared that, there was no comparison. You love God so much that now that you love God so much and you're so focused on Him, you love your family even more than you did before. Um, so, 
covers. I have I have children too, and it's fantastic um, that when you've got a relationship with God, how much more He pulls you closer to your family. Um, another weapon we'll go into that that He uses um, is your tongue. How many of you heard the old cliche that uh, the tongue is mightier than than a sword? Uh, Let's look at a couple of Bible verses before I go into it. Proverbs 18.21. Write that down. 18.21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death. Physical death and spiritual death. Death and life. Spiritual life. Physical life. Are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruits. What does that mean to eat its fruits? Whatever you comes out of your mouth is like toothpaste. Remember, it's hard to get it back in. How many of you... Raise your hand. I'm going to raise two of them here. How many of you had said something that you tore somebody down and or said something you might have not thought about saying before you said it and you wish you could have took it back, but then it's too late. Now you're going to bear the fruit of what you said. Uh, it could be the exact opposite. You know, you might make somebody's day that was thinking of suicide or had a depressing day or said, you know what, you just made my day and or, or you said the right thing at the right time. Um, James 1.26 says, If anyone among you thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, religious or have a relationship, if you think you have a relationship with God and you don't bridle your tongue, but deceives his own heart, there we go now. You didn't bridle your tongue. You're, you're deceiving even you know, your, his own heart. Your, your religion is useless. Your relationship with God is useless. If you don't bridle your tongue, you can't say you have a relationship with God, but yet you use your tongue to tear somebody down. And I know, I've heard this before, but it's the truth. What I said was the truth. Guys, it don't matter whether it's the truth or not. If you use your tongue to tear somebody down, uh, you can't have a relationship with God and do that. You can't serve two masters. You can't. He says, I want all of you. I don't want just a weekend visitation. I want you all. You can't serve me here and there and then serve Satan too. You can't serve me and then use your tongue to tear somebody apart. Because um, you're not serving me. I wouldn't do that. So why would I have a child that does that? Ephesians 4.29 Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. No, what word? Corrupt. Proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification. Edification means to edify, to lift up somebody. Oh man, did you see? Uh, hey, John got a raise yesterday. I am so happy for him. He's worked so hard for that. Um, you lift up, lift up, that it might impart grace to the hearers, that it might be treasure to whoever hears it. Think about it, I might say something to somebody, and I have other people that heard it, and I just push them away from God. They're not going to listen to anything else I have to say. Well, he's no better than I am. Look at him, he's using this. Hey, you know, see, uh, what he said was wrong, and if you use your tongue to tear down somebody, Satan loves it. Because he's now taking the weapon that you got. Can you imagine? The enemy tells you, you know, he has you pick up that M16 that's yours and shoot one of your soldiers, one of your troops. He just took the weapon that you had. He, you know, Satan did that. He just he used that weapon, that tongue of yours, to hurt. Now he's jumping up and down because now not only has he got you away from God and your heart and your focus, but he's got someone else too. You see, beloved, I, I'm so glad you came today. And I want you to stop and think if you get a chance. Stop and think. You know, you've heard the old cliche, you know, think before you say something. And then, uh, <laughs> that's easier said than done, I know. Oh, if anybody knows, I know. Um, but stop and think sometimes. Um, one, where's my heart at? Where, where does my heart truly lie? Two, where's my focus? Where's my, you know, my focus of... Of what I'm going to do today. What's my focus going to be on? What's it on right now? And three, my tongue. What, what am I going to use it for today? Am I going to use it to lift somebody up? Am I going to use it uh, to praise God? The Bible says He inhabits your praises, so why not praise Him all the time? Am I going to use it for that? Or am I going to use it to, well, just not having a good day, it's not my fault, and you know, everybody has a bad day. Everybody does have a bad day. That doesn't mean you should make someone else have a bad day, too. I'm going to let you all go for now, and uh, and I encourage you to come back again. We'll try to have two of these videos a week. Um, we're going to get more into the weapons of Satan. Um, but just know that I love you, and uh, God loves you so much more. And um, 
but he's willing to tell you this. Can you imagine he's willing to use somebody else or my tongue to lift you up and to teach you today and to draw you closer? Ain't that love? That he's drawing you closer. God bless you. It was nice to talk to you. Uh, get on my get on here. Uh, subscribe. Uh, push like. I hope you liked it. Leave me some comments. Again, my second video, I'll do what I can to try to answer the comments um, if I can find out how. And send send uh, instructions. Even show me how. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting older, guys. And I'm not as young. And I don't know the social media like you all do. So um, I welcome your comments. And uh, God bless you. God love you. And uh, please uh, examine yourself today. We, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Bye.